Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Atiullah Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum And always a reminder for myself and abduk al ajis da'ifu, miskeen, rizal, majahal <coughs> and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah I think last week we touched on a lot of important understandings and inshaAllah people get a chance to absorb those and that will then reflect in the questions and leading to a greater understanding. So that a sense that we are trying to open these realities and to go deeper not just to keep sort of going in different directions. Best that when these subjects come we all contemplate and try our best to get a deeper understanding and then at least those questions and, and comments will begin to reflect that. Fa'awuzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, amanu. And last week we made a comment that we are not fluent in Arabic and the understanding is that we don't need to be fluid in Arabic and the danger in which Allah has raised us not to be. That anyone whom has a knowledge, that knowledge can bind them and block them and enslave them. And a little knowledge can block a great entry into this reality, means then there's a hikmah in the reality of Ishraqiyoon, these souls that will rise from the west and because the sun rises, it means that the sun rises from the east but in last days Prophet described that the sun would rise from the west. And Ishraqiyoon, Ishraq means like the rising sun and these are the sons of knowledge and haqqaiqs. No, not the book knowledge, not, not what common people understand and written everywhere. But these are the knowledges of the soul and the Muhammadan haqqaiqs and that that requires a, an event horizon. And the beauty of that reality we described is the the canvas has to be white. And the analogy of that white campus is people whom speak English, that they're coming and listening these to these teeth. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. teachings that they can comprehend in English, the comprehension is enough to begin to understand. As a result these realities that begin to push out onto the souls of people, they listen with their ears but the talks are directed to the souls. And that's why sometimes they understand through their head but the greater depth of it is not understood until they contemplate. And that's the importance that these are the uloom and knowledges that are flowing from soul to soul and releasing its realities upon the soul for a rising, an immense rising in which the souls are being empowered with immense knowledges and realities from all directions of what Allah is sending. As a result these are dressing and blessing the souls and this is a, a tremendous importance. And when Allah is giving us a guidance, oh for you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, amanu, that the station of belief is one very difficult to achieve. 
to have a belief. We said before, you can accept Islam but doesn't mean that you believe in Islam. Belief is an action and a light that must enter into the heart of the servant in which they believe. Means they have this immense love for Allah the love for Prophet because Prophet gave to us, Ya Umar, you have to love me more than you love yourself and this is iman. So, amanu is to believe and to have a, a station of iman and faith. So, when Allah is directing us that you have to have faith, you have to have love, it has to have a light within the heart. And then again directing, amanu, that once you believe is not good enough because belief is infinite. The level of belief is infinite so there must be a sense in which to negate oneself, continuously what they call empty your cup. As a result of the empty cup then it con continuously asking to receive its Divine grace from the Divinely Presence. Was once the heart is qulf and they came to Prophet the cousins and they specifically said, our hearts are locked which was dangerous and a dangerous concept that no matter what you talk to us our hearts are locked. We, 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 we think we've reached the pinnacle of what is needed to understand. And what Prophet brought for us is that keep your heart always open. Above every knower there is a, another knower, above every knowledge there must be infinite knowledges. There is no one knowledge that Allah infinitely expands upon the horizon of everyone's soul and heart according to their capacity. And that understanding has an immense reality for people to believe. One, they have to come to the belief of Allah that's a major accomplishment. Then they have to come to the belief and the love of Prophet that sweetens their true belief that we described in the Muharram opening. And that Allah they're coming to the love of Allah but they have to now run into the cave. So it means that to find Allah you have to run into a cave. So then this is a, a directive for the believer that you're not running into the heavens and that your relationship is not directly with the Creator because the Creator is not in a cave. So He's giving for us a physical location to remind to us, you are a physical creature, don't overstep your boundary thinking that you deal directly with the Divine. Said, so you can talk to God all you want but when you claim He's talking to you then you've lost your mind. Means that you've lost the step of humility and therefore lies a tremendous danger. This path is based on humility. So Allah gives to us on the second lunar month, the month of safar, the journeying and Safar bi khair that Allah is, is dressing for us all these lights and all these blessings. This is the secret of the power of 18, the 18th surah, Surah Al-Kahab, the 18th name of Allah Al-Fatah, the one whom opens and the 18th name of Prophet Nabiya Rahmah, Rasulul Rahmah. So it means the opening of Rahmah. So this journey then is identifying that go to the cave, that partake yourself like the companions of the cave. So Allah is giving to us a direction on earth for, for people whom are prideful and arrogant and say, no it's only Allah, only Allah. This was the, the thinking of shaitan, he didn't accept anything but Allah, didn't accept Adam, didn't accept anything and this satanic understanding is an understanding of arrogance, Allah giving to us mm, your creation. So you find your door in creation, means find a door because it's your belief and step through that door. And this is the, the, the talks that we gave on manifestation, the talks based on faith, all of these 
from that last year, now we're going to draw to be even stronger. That Allah is giving to us that when the oppression is about you and all around you and the companions of the cave, the sleepers of Ephesus is a biblical story, it's in the Torah and the, the Bible and in all their understandings is that these seven sleepers were high in the kingdom at that time. But the kingdom had become so corrupt that it wanted everybody to enter its disbelief and its evilness. And they knew that if they stood in that kingdom they would lose their faith because of what the kingdom was calling to them and asking of them and their being, they left. They left all their attachments, everything to run for the Divinely Kingdom. So then Allah is giving us the guidelines and the understanding in Holy Qur'an. So then at every moment in our life we have to run from the dunya. But you can't just say, I'm, I'm running to Allah, I believe in only Allah, don't, don't talk to me except in Allah. Allah is telling us, no, no, the, the companions of the cave, their wording is dead, yes, we, we believe in Allah and we want to seek refuge in Allah and Allah directed them, go to the cave. Go to this place on earth and isolate yourself. And alhamdulillah the Divinely Cave of Allah is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad the doorway to the heart of all the Prophets, the portal. So now they, they have in all of their alien sci-fi movies portals and they're finding these sci-fi places where there's an energy, through that energy they can move into another realm or dimension. But that is existing from beginning of time. We said the one portal that Sayyidina Musa saw, when he says, I see a fire and I'm going to go and he entered into what he understood was the Divinely Presence. So means Allah has these portals upon earth and these are ways towards the Divinely Presence. And Allah is giving one such example in Surah Al-Kahf that Take yourself from what they worship and direct yourself and enter into the cave. And the reality that we'd like to talk about tonight is entering into the cave. That it has to have a, a belief that when a person and a servant wants to direct themselves away from the material world, they're going to sit in their meditation and that becomes the importance of Every time they make their salah just connecting their heart a few minutes and Allah says, based on your faith you will begin to make a portal for yourself. You have that power, you have the power to manifest that reality and that's what's important because Allah asking you to believe, you believed in me then, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu amanu, now your belief has to be increased. That I want to seek refuge in the cave, I want to be in the presence of Prophet Ya Rabbi. I want the reality of, I want to seek refuge in you from the accursed shaitan. And how, where, where is that going to be? How are we going to seek refuge in Allah from shaitan? Is by being with those whom are already in Allah's refuge. And the only one whom is in perfection of refuge that reach the title of servanthood is the soul and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad The Ya Rabbi I'm seeking refuge in you from the accursed shaitan and that cave for me is the heart and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And that becomes the reality of Ashab al-Kahf because the, the stories of all the Prophets are symbolic of the position that they hold in the reality of the Muhammadan kingdom because Prophet had not yet arrived on earth. But they were placeholders, exemplars and examples of that reality. So as soon as the arrival of Prophet again arrived upon the earth, he then directed that, I am the one whom is the cave and he took Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq in Muharra and they went into the cave. Qara Thur
the cave of, of Thur or, or they call Orion and in English they translate it the cave, the cave of Orion. But the importance is that that's the reality in the real cave and that Prophet is directing that from the active state of Mecca and to enter into the realities of Medina to Munawwara you have to enter into this cave. This cave in which my presence the Muhammadan Muhammadun Rasulullah is within that cave and all of our souls were present in that reality in Muharram in which he took to himself in the cave and the holy companion Sayyidina Abu Bakr as salam that accompanied him. As a result we are now in that cave from Muharram the Qur'an opened for us from Ayatul Kareem was verse 40 and the souls have been taken from verse 40 into Surat Al-Kahf and as a result they are now residing within the cave of Muhammadun Rasulullah and all that transpires on this journey now is in this cave in which Allah is dressing the servant and blessing the servant. That becomes now the power of their belief that when they believe with this love that I want to be with whom I love and that I have no way of finding this physical location except through the act of love and muhabbat. So then how do I get there Shaykh? By your love. Your love has to be seen and shown and these become your actions. The greatest showing is the love of Milad al-Nabi we've described in many, many talks, hundreds of talks. It is the single most important key of this cave because you're identifying with the importance of the Milad, the birth, birth of the soul which is the birth now of all creation that Allah was a hidden treasure wanting to be known known through the light of Muhammadan Rasulullah The birth of the physicality means now the directive of the, the rahmah and the mercy of Allah has come upon this earth to bring complete guidance, perfection of guidance, the perfection of the religion of Allah in all of its might and glory. So means the soul, the body, all of that is a perfection of a holy star. As a result then Allah wants us with our love and our actions of our love is then to begin to open that process. So means then our actions, our love, our showing our love, attendance into the milad, attendance into the weekly nasheeds and salawats, all of these acts of love are the only thing that draw us into that cave because it's not something by your aqal that, oh let me think about this. Let me drive to here and go. So it means that in this cave of love all that matters are actions. How much do you love? Your actions will show themselves, will draw you near to that reality. How much do you believe? Do you put your belief where your belief is? Means that is this what you believed? Is this what you, you, you bet on in your life that this is 100% is real for me, this is all that I got, this is all that I want? And everybody knows themselves how much they believed. And if they have their belief and that because it's not for a shaykh to, to judge, it's between them and their Lord was said. You know everybody, everybody has an insurance policy. If for us we have a property and somebody comes to us and says, you want to insure this building? Say, yeah, 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 we want to insure it. How about like for five bucks? Uh, okay, okay. Well, I would have to kind of think in my brain, do you think for five bucks I'm going to be insuring that building? No. So what you put into it is what you're going to expect out of it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, you're going to think I put five dollars I'm going to get nice insurance coverage until the roof came off and we had a flooding there and, and what is us back there he knows our insurance was, was garbage. Whoever sold us that insurance didn't pay for anything, didn't do anything, 
But they were very expensive too, that's a different subject. But in life what we put into it, what we're going to get out of it. So we put our all, we put our effort, we put our actions, we put everything into this pot of love. If you feel like you did all that you can do then a hundred percent guarantee for you, you must feel that love of Sayyidina Muhammad It's not something a shaykh gives, it's not somebody any, you know, anyone who talks can give, it's what you can give. What you put into it is what you feel of it because you're gaining that faith, you're building that faith, your actions are showing the immensity of your love, all of these, these acts of love is bringing the soul deep into that cave. Then, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, amanu, again. So it means it's a perpetual state of manifestation and this manifestation is the secret of faith. Now it become like a sci-fi movie, right? So if I tell to you in your living room or this room where you meditate, there's a door. If you sit there, contemplate the door, think about that door, it will begin to manifest. You say, no Shaykh it's not, I say, it is. You have that ability to make it manifest based on your faith. And this all has to do with the faith of Allah So anyone comes to oh it's only Allah yes this is how Allah grants you this door. To ma Allah, atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. Allah is mandating obey Allah, obey the Rasul and the ulul amr, obey them means follow them, believe in them and everyone has a unique belief. We said there can be a hundred people in the room, each one has a completely different belief and they each have a different door of their understanding. Some doors are barely manifesting, some have a full-blown door that they can physically see it, they step through it and they're in a completely different dimension. This is the same teaching but not the same heart. No one person has the same heart. Allah made every heart uniquely different but based on the actions of that person by listening to the guidance they are now manifesting a door. The first doors that they sat and they believed in Allah and they believed in the teachings, they believed Allah is sending them a guidance because they asked for guidance and lo and behold they found a channel, they found a teacher and now they're sitting. That door now begins to open. Now the teacher is teaching them that this door is described as Muhammadun Rasulullah and then they begin to meditate and contemplate and begin to visualize themselves by Rosa Sharif in the presence of Prophet with their actions, their mawlid, their attendance, all of these things that they're doing, the attendance of the zikr, the going out and feeding, all these actions are bricks. Tawassul bi haqqi wa tawassul bi sabr. They took a path of, of haqq and its pavement and its bricks are, are sabr and continuous actions. So now you are making these bricks, your actions are building this imaginary door actually to become a manifest door for you. And as soon as you're building this love and this feeling of love for Prophet then Allah asking you again, now again believe, atiyu ulul amri minkum. So now you're even having to believe deeper that my ulul am and my shaykh has a significant importance on this door because he's giving me the coordinates because I don't see it, he's giving me the coordinates because I don't feel it, he's giving me all of these energies and all of this himma to begin to make this door to manifest for me. And that's what we talked about last week, means the importance of this love and this manifestation, this acceptance of the shaykh, the guidance of the shaykh that when you truly believe then the shaykh is sitting in that doorway. So means now this door is, is opening, this door is now manifesting 
and lo and behold who do you see at that doorway? It's your shaykh, not his shaykh, your shaykh. Don't overstep him because then you're making your ego think you're someone special and that you're at the same comparable strength as his. But you visualize your shaykh is sitting right there at that doorway. And all that it requires is for you to keep connecting your heart and that I'm nothing and I'm nothing. That from that dimension in which you manifest, send me your nazar, send me your light into my heart, send these energies upon me and begin to dress me. As a result then that manifestation becomes much more stronger. And we gave you now the understandings of, of <laughs> what they tried to teach me of these ledgers and cold wallet and hot wallets, right? Because that's everything of encryption and smart code, smart contracts, that's teaching you from Allah's ancient realities. So Qur'an is a… Is a encrypted book and every letter of Qur'an is on a smart contract and it's completely blockchain, nobody can mess with it. Other books the dajjal will change all of the paragraphs, all of everything, that's not on a smart contract. Qur'an is locked on smart contracts, means this uloom and these knowledges, these technologies will begin to show you the heaven, the kingdom. Means the knowledge you seek is in that ulul amr and that he has a, a cold storage USB. Some of our people don't understand the tech. But the knowledge you seek has to be somewhere that's encrypted and safe, right? Because then anybody could just steal the coins. So if that's where you see like somebody had like 500 million dollars and he had it on uh, some coin base and then they went out of business and they took all his coins. So they say, oh if you have a lot of coins and if you have a lot of digital things you better put it on a USB in which you have in your pocket. But you think Allah's knowledges and Allah's realities that He gives to a shaykh they're just stored somewhere so anyone can come take it off the shelf and go and leave? No. Means that as soon as you learn how to connect and you believed in the doorway of that dimension that you're asking to enter is the shaykh's soul and reality is sitting there. And as soon as you begin to connect with the shaykh, he's encrypting a smart contract of knowledge into your heart. And the more you're connecting then he's sending another knowledge but remember it's locked on a smart contract. Means that you cannot take it and go everything will be lost and it's all encrypted. So then it requires this reality, otherwise imagine without these smart contracts you couldn't track or trace anything. You don't think Allah wants to track that every letter, that's why Imam Ali salam came and taught, if someone teaches you alif or ba you owe your life to them, why? Because you're locked on a smart contract to them. That knowledge that came into your soul is locked on a contract with the shaykh's soul. You can't negate that, you can't say, no this is from me, it's not from you, it's on a contract. So means that this level of light and encryption of light and realities of light is something can't be understood. Even just trying to talk to about it now may confuse a lot of people. But the basic understanding is that when you make that connection a knowledge is coming out and locking into you and it's locked from him. And as you go deeper into your practices another knowledge will come out, testing your level, testing your security, testing your loyalty, testing your character. As a result then another encryption can come out, another encryption can come out and it's all based on the ability of the servant to make the connection. When they're making that connection these knowledges are flowing. They keep their love, they keep their manner and they keep their respect and their character. As a result the contract is flowing back and forth to them. At any time 
the only way to lose knowledge is if Allah wants to cancel that contract. Means where the student now lost the favour from Allah and Allah going to cancel the contract. And the only way that the contract can be cancelled is the student begins to enter into backbiting the shaykh. As soon as they backbite the shaykh they have negated the smart contract, the knowledge is pulled from the soul and the reality of that person. And that's why then whatever hasanat and goodness somebody does they keep it except when they enter into backbiting. As soon as they enter into backbiting they are negating the goodness, they give back the goodness to that person they backbited and they take the sayat and the sins of that person. In reality it's cancelling that smart contract and unlocking it from their reality. So that person no longer has that knowledge and that uloom. Everything is encrypted, everything is locked in this world of light. There is no access to it by any randomness, nothing. That's like you saying you can randomly come upon 10,000 bitcoins. There's nothing and no way for you to do that. And that's what these technologies are showing people. That's why we're giving these, uh, these analogies because everyone's going to start studying these things. And when they start to study smart contracts and understand these software platforms and how complicated they are and the reason why Dajjal is bringing this is to track everyone, to charge everyone, to tax everyone. This is not a contract in which nothing will be known. This is the heavenly kingdom coming and showing on earth every dollar will be known. Who has it, who spent it, who owes it? This is not a system that, oh nobody will know what we're doing. No, Dajjal is going to want to know everything of who has what and tax them for what they have or what they don't claim they have, it doesn't matter. But this is a sign from the heavenly kingdom that Allah wants us to understand, Allah knows everything, everything, everything is inscribed and locked and there is no one who can deny it. And the day of judgment you rise and these contracts will speak for themselves, everything gained and earned, everything achieved and, and burned, everything will be revealed because it's all locked on these encrypted lights. So these are immense realities, as soon as we enter into this cave, this is a cave of manifestation that we're asking to manifest this love by our actions and by our deeds, not by our brain but by our actions and our deeds. Those whom their actions and their deeds are solid, the power of that manifestation becomes very solid in which they build for themselves a beatific garden. And as a result they open a door and now enter into the heart of the shaykh. And that shaykh is in the heart of his shaykh and that shaykh in the heart of their shaykh all the way into the heart of Prophet So imagine the amount of years that you would have to struggle to achieve anything close to Shaykh Abdul Faizi Dagestani Ghatta Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Impossible, impossible. But through this system in which Allah has given that the shaykhs when they're taught by this love they entered into a door and their door is their shaykh's door to their shaykh's door to their shaykh's door, unbroken chain into the heart of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result as soon as we enter into that love and enter into that proximity we're dressed by those realities and those blessings. Lifetimes, lifetimes, that's why Prophet described that one hour of tafakkur like 70 years, one hour. We said that in one day it's like 1500 years somebody would have to live to, to accomplish this one day of this person's tafakkur. So means the, ra- the reality of lights, the immensities of lights, upon man huwa alim al hakim that Allah given to the month of safar is the alim and hikmah, knowledge and wisdom are bestowed in this cave and in these realities and the immensities of these realities and all of the realities of Ashab al-Kaf and 
and the realities of Sayyidina Khidr and, and Sayyidina Musa is this is a very blessed month, powerful tajallis, powerful lights and blessings. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and that His mercy make everything to be easy for us. Abu Ahmad Sultan al-Awliya, Imam Shaykh Abu Ahmad al-Sughuri Qaddasallahu siru that bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siru Surat al-Fatiha. The Shaykhat ya Rasul Kareem, the Imam Shaykh Adnan Qaddasallahu siru was described that mentioned Mawlana Abu Ahmad Suquri's name often in this month. He carries a secret for the month of Safar and knowledges to be bestowed and that to make the tajalli uh, lighter for individuals that uh, not to experience uh, too much disruption within that force. So alhamdulillah mentioned Sultanul Awliya Ma Abu Ahmad Suquri inshaAllah often and that to be dressed and blessed by this the holiness of this month inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.